I like going to visit with my friends and stuff and concerts and I'm down for whatever really. I like to hang out like with my friends and stuff and listen to music and stuff. I like to dance. I love to dance. We are uh, Scott and Dina Ruthman. Uh, we have two children. I'm Cody and I have Nina Pig Type C and I'm 20 years old. I'm Kayla, I'm 16 and I have Newman Pick Type C. Newman Pick Type C disease is a uh, genetic disease that uh, affects the way that uh, cholesterol is taken out of cells. They have a genetic abnormality to where they can't process that cholesterol. It starts building up in the cells. It clogs those cells in the neural paths in the brain and eventually causes cell death. It's been called childhood Alzheimer. At this time there's no cure and uh, uh, we just we, we take it a day at a time. I think that it was like I had this time or period where I could really do anything like a normal kid and bam it hit. Like Scott said, not a cure at this time, which will make makes it a terminal illness disease because uh, eventually they'll lose all their functions and their organs will shut down. I have struggles like mom has to help me in the shower. When walking after usually a couple days after our procedure, I'm wobbly, so she has to help me walk. You don't forget that day, and so much runs through your mind. And the first thing is, how are we going to do this? How, where are we going to go from here? I think there's anywhere from three to 500 people worldwide that have this, so it's very rare. In order to uh, get the disease, Dina and I, we are carrying the same misfolded gene. And when those two things happen, you end up with a, a child that, that is, you know, that has the full-blown disease. So we're, we're just carriers. Cody and Kayla are aware of their disease and the severity of it. They do know that their life has gotten more difficult from when they were younger. Only a few people can actually know what I'm going through. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> but like, we take each day to come. Eventually they'll lose their motor skills to be able to walk, talk, feed themselves. Um, and basically, their, their living skills will all eventually die off. Most likely you're going to end up in wheelchairs and it's going to become a situation to where they are just totally dependent on us. Well, I used to like be able to cheerlead and stuff. I can't do that anymore. We used to be able to eat like regular food and now we have to like cut it up smaller. We used to go to the skate park in Nashville a lot. Shoot, probably now I couldn't even get on a skateboard without falling. I used to be able to go hang out with my friends. Well, I still go hang out with them, but I have to be more precautionary. You want to, just go to a corner, curl up, and just let it in there. But you know you've got two children that you've got to be the backbone for, that you've got to keep fighting for and keeping them fighting. And it's just not an option. Uh, it's pretty rough to watch, but we, we move on. We uh, go through uh, this with trying to hold our heads up high. The trial is going really good. They helped us a lot with all of our stuff. I see improvement in both of us. The kids first got diagnosed. We didn't have a clue on what to do, how to go about anything. And, and uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, get some info about the NIH and this upcoming trial and stuff. And, and they're giving hope to a whole lot of people. And 
that means the world to us because, you know, like I said, it, at first we just didn't know what to do and didn't know if there was any hope. You know? We don't know where the kids would be today had they not gotten into this trial for two years now. Every month they've been receiving this cyclodextrin drug, which is show that it's slowed down the progression. Where would they have been if they didn't get into the trial? Yeah. We have spinal infusions. We take spinal fluid out and put, this, put the medicine. It's not a cure, but it's giving hopefully extra years into their life as well as giving time for studies to be done, more research to find a cure. I mean, it does get tiring sometimes, you know? But what are you gonna do? <laughs> It helped us a lot joining the trial because for many reasons, the kids get a grade A checkup every month, top to bottom. If there's any issues, the NIH is on top of it, giving us resources, putting us with the specialists there. So that's very comforting. We got very educated on the disease from the doctors and the nurses, as well as we have met many families that also have the same disease their children do and we've met the children. Cody and Kayla have met the other children with MPC. I think that helped them a lot going, okay, I'm, we're not in this by ourselves. there's other kids. It helps Scott and I talk with other parents that can literally say, I'm walking in your shoes. Whenever I get out of high school, I plan on going to college and I wanna go to Texas A&M. I'm gonna go to school for um, nursing and pediatric care. They're both just full of life and the days that Scott and I are getting hit in the stomach thinking about the disease and challenges we've come across and what we could face. We look at them and they're just just going, I mean, it's their norm. It reminds us, I think, that this is our norm too and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just what we've adjusted to and how we live. We'll be healthy today, right? We'll be okay. We'll be alright. I would like to go on tour one day with a man. Like, I mean, it wouldn't wouldn't have to be like I'm like in the van. I just want to be like. Just, just to live that experience. When Cody and Kayla were first diagnosed, that's just a day that hit hard and you'll never forget it. The, the days have gotten worse. Some days have gotten tougher because the kids have progressed in their disease. Um, but we still have a lot of positive days. We're not ready to throw in the towel. We want to uh, try to just let people know what's going on and let them know that in in a time uh, when they're they're going through really hard times that there are people out there that understand. We want to try to bring awareness to this disease and just, you know, do what we can to uh, raise awareness and help other families. We'll continue to fight for Cody and Kayla and all the kids with this Neiman Pick disease and support them. And we're not giving up. There's going to be a cure for it. And when it's a cure found, we'll be first in line for it. Yeah, it's going to be a ready time.